Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to be back. Um, we are here with the amazing pole and fitness coach and entrepreneur, Emily Igon. It's I'm so excited to be here and interview you for our new season. Like, this is exciting. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time out and meeting with us and, and sharing your story with us. <laughs> and everything we have to offer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited um, to share I, all you offer. Yeah, yeah. And um, there, there were several different questions that we had for you because you have um, some extra expertise. Um, and, I, and I am so excited to learn more, more about that. Um, but first, um, let's, let's, find out what brought you to pole dance. So my journey began in 2008. I was in college. I was going to school for mathematics in California. Um, I had this like dream of working for NASA and (laughs) I uh, was working as a math tutor at the time. And my uh, coworker, she came up to me one day and she was like, Hey, I saw that there's this pole class, this pole studio in town. And I really want to go but I'm nervous and I don't want to go alone. Will you go with me? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> um, I don't know if I feel comfortable with that, uh, but she convinced me. And, um, so I went to my first class and I remember driving into the parking lot of this, uh, studio. And as I'm like driving and trying to find a parking spot and like trying to find it, cause I can't find it. I'm like starting to like get in tears and I'm like, what am I doing? I can't, I'm not going to go. I like call them up. And this is like, you know, back in the day before, like you could like text or like, you know, it it literally had to call them up on like it, you know, and uh, the instructor picks up. I'm like, you have my money. Like, I I just can't come in and I'm too nervous. And she just on the phone, she's like, just come inside, just come inside sit down. You can watch, you don't have to do anything, but just come in. I was like, okay, fine, fine. I'm here. I finally found it. I'll come in. Um, and after just kind of watching that first class, I mean, I sat for a little bit of it, um, and eventually like got up and started doing some of the the stuff, but, um, it was the first place I had ever really found in my life. I think at that point, just not a supportive community, but also a way of moving and, um, using your body in a way that wasn't just so like, um, we're doing this because we have to get fit or thin or, you know, um, that the sort of like hard and fast, like gym kind of thing. Um, it was fitness for fun and that like hooked me immediately. I love that. So you went from wanting to be working with NASA and teaching mathematics to that first day that probably would have scared me away from pole to, <laughs> <laughs> to now where you are. That's incredible. Um, do you also, when you got into pole, do you have any background movement that helped? So I had zero when I first started. I um, actually really at that time, um, you know, I was in my, I think, 19 or 20. And, uh, I was struggling huge with body image and, um, a lot of self-confidence issues. And so like, I never really had set foot in the gym. I like played volleyball in high school. That was about it. Um, and so this was completely new for me, um, and really opened up a whole world of what exercise and fitness, um, could be rather than it being like a punishment, you know? Right. I always say that too. Like, this is like our, like, cause the gym is like kind of like work, but this is fun. And it's also like what we do at the gym. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm lifting myself. (laughs) Exactly. And I love that you share at the time you're going through body image things. Cause I think a lot of us definitely go through that when we start finding posts. So thank you for sharing that honesty. Yeah. And then what types of classes did you like, um, did you take like the like pull flow classes or tricks classes? So back then, I mean, I pull was still relatively new ish. I mean, I don't think there were even like certifications back then in 2008. And so every class I went to, it was like basically an all levels class. 
Um, so like every class we'd have like just a smorgasbord of different levels of people coming in and the instructor would just, she did a great job of, um, like giving everybody something to do, but there was always like a little bit of element of like tricks and flow and like everything within the same class. That's, right there. That's, <laughs> that's so interesting. I know now, like when you go to a um, class, it's like set like you have your particular whatever you're doing so it's so refreshing and interesting to hear that back then it was just like everything oh yeah whatever the instructor <laughs> wanted to throw at us that's what she threw at us <laughs> oh wow that's Love fascinating. It. <laughs> that would have given me anxiety <laughs> oh yeah like looking next door you're like pull neighbor and they're doing like this crazy thing you're like i no i can't <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. But then what, what made you then want to start teaching? So I was, um, I think maybe I was a junior in college, um, at that point and I'd been doing pole for about a year. And, um, my mother, uh, was a personal trainer. She found a lot of herself through that career. And I had, you know, your traditional mental breakdown mid college. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? And is this what I really want to do? Is this really my passion? And, um, I had like a really hard conversation with myself where I was like, no, you know what this, I I'm going to drop out of college and I'm going to get on the pole. <laughs> and that's what I did. And at the time, you know, there weren't pole certifications, anything like that. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just go get my personal training certification. Cause that's going to be the next best thing. Cause you know, that'll at least help teach me, you know, some of the things I think I need to know. And so I ended up leaving college and uh, pursuing a personal training career and uh, really dove into that for a couple of years, you know, like um, as far as like teaching pole and stuff like that, I like did it out of my house to begin with. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. I mean, that's just um, very smart of you to like, even though there wasn't a certification, still go for the personal training. Um, just so you can at least get the basics, that definitely must have helped you. Um, were they really selling po home poles um, in 2008? Oh, yeah, it was. Oh, my gosh. Um, Little Minx was the pole that I had back then. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I carried that one around for a while. I don't know if they're still around or not, but yeah, that was my first pull. It was a little Minx pull. That's incredible. Right. I remember that it was like little Minx and then the X pull when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but um, as I said in the, the beginning, um, you, you have some special also um, extra um, things that you bring to your coach in and that is your a trauma-informed coach. Yes. Um, would you like to talk a little bit more about what that is and, and everything? <laughs> and how do you become yeah. one? <laughs> I mean, I think uh, trauma informed anything right now is like such a hot topic. And I think a lot more people are actually understanding and getting into it, which I think is fantastic because for so long, we really haven't tapped into that part of really any business and it can, it can be applied to any business, you know? Um, but my experience through poll, basically, um, any studio that I really was a part of, whether I was a student or instructor, um, I really noticed that there was this big sort of community bonding where it wasn't, um, exclusive. It was inclusive. Like you could have a new student come in and immediately, like they would be cheered on by, by students. And, um, poll really helped me in a way deal with, um, so I, suffer from some CPTSD, which is like complex PTSD or, um, and so pull and movement in itself really helped me kind of come to terms with a lot of my traumas, deal with it, gain self-confidence in ways that like, you know, I'd been in like abusive relationships and pull was definitely a vein for me to help like rediscover like my own strengths, my sensuality, like, uh, me loving my body for what it can do rather than what it looks like. And so when opening up my studio, um, and then also just through, um, you know, instructing, I really felt like bringing that awareness and that 
element was really important to anybody else who walked through my door because pole is an insanely vulnerable sport. <laughs> um, I mean, case in point, you walk into your first class and everybody's half naked. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> Um, and so, you know, that can be uncomfortable for some people based on their history, things that's gone on in their own life, or, you know, you have people coming in who are freshly divorced, or maybe they've gone through, you know, domestic abuse. You, you don't know everybody's story. And so I felt it was really, really important to be able to honor and um, understand that with everybody coming in, um, especially when working with uh, people's egos. Um, uh, you know, people can get really upset easily with pole when they can't get a move or a trick or they're, they've tried it a thousand times, or, you know, they've come to class and then there's this new girl next to them who got the trick that they've been trying to get for three months on our first class. And so, you know, understanding those elements and being able to work with people, I think is really important to keep people wanting to come back and dive deeper into their pole journeys. Um, and so when I was looking you know, towards how do I, you know, uh, get more involved in this like trauma informed, um, world. Um, there's actually this wonderful, um, therapist, her name is Samantha and she lives in Canada and she, uh, put out, it's like a two hour seminar, um, specifically for how to be like a trauma informed full instructor. And, it was an incredible workshop. I loved it so much. Um, all of my instructors, when they get hired, they have to go through that workshop, take it um, so that we can maintain like a trauma informed space for everybody. Um, but absolutely incredible. I think she goes by the name Daisy Chains on Instagram. Yeah. If you ever want to look it up, it's incredible. They still do those webinars. That's awesome. I would love to take part of that. Absolutely. I think it's pre-recorded. So you just, uh, you can message her, go on their website and it's, um, and you can watch the recording. Oh, yes. Um, oh my goodness. We yeah. might need that information from you. So right, Daisy yeah, Chains, you said, sure. Daisy <laughs> Chains. Yeah, we'll get the link and we'll, we'll put it down in the, <laughs> the blurb and everything too. <laughs> yeah. Really, really informative stuff that you would not think about at all. Like it wouldn't come to mind. It's so, yeah really good information right though because I think of all the time like sometimes like when we have the our flex class like we'll work on certain moves and people will have emotions yeah. and and I don't know how yeah. to you know we'll just be like yes that could happen but like <laughs> beyond that like there's so much more healing that can happen and and change like I don't know it's just yes. so so beyond my expertise, but I know that these things, you know, when we work with bodies, there's so many things that can come out. <laughs> and, um, I mean, we, as a studio and, and as an instructor too, like we hold the space for people, but we also are very forefront uh, of the fact that like, we're not therapists. This is yeah. not a, you know, a therapeutic, um, event, you know, we're not here to that, you know, that's for, you to go see a, a therapist about. So we're not yes. you know, working in that regard because that's outside of our scope, but mm. um, you know, making sure that we do create a safe environment for everyone. And that, I mean, that even includes like making sure that we're using the right pronouns and that we're not assuming and, you know, yes. holding space for all identities, all sizes, all ages, and not being exclusive in, you know, what we offer. Yes. Yeah. That's, yes. that's incredible. I feel like they should add that to all pole certifications now because mm -hmm. I've taken a few of them and they don't really have touch on the trauma informed yeah. um, and they really should. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for that information. I can't wait because that would be a fun. How do you say what is it? Extra college credits. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> educational credits. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah, continued education. <laughs> I also appreciate that it doesn't, um, because I think I was a little bit intimidated about um, everything because I thought maybe you had to be a therapist, but the way you bring it up is creating this space and holding this space, which Facts. I think is much more attainable. Um, then that's something that we, we all can do for sure. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Love and it. Like yeah. you, 
And like you said, being brave enough to say, this is beyond my scope. I am not your therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I've had to say that a few times, but. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> right, too, and we're all like, pole is my therapy, but like, that's out. <laughs> like... <laughs> a definite aid, for sure, but it's not a be all, fix all. Yeah. Yeah, Sex. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so amazing. So what is your studio at Let's. Let's learn a little bit more about your studio. Yes. <laughs> so we're located in Bend, Oregon. Um, and we've been open almost two years. So um, we it'll be two years in February. Mm-hmm. And um, our studio's name is Altius, which um, is the, um, was it part of the Olympic motto? If you've ever heard it, it's like Kitschis, Altius, Fortius, um, which is faster, higher, stronger. And so Altius is higher, which pulls, right? So <laughs> I love that. Uh, That's genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so two please- years, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was going to say two years. That means you opened during coronavirus, during- right? Yeah. Oh, That's I incredible. Coronavirus. <laughs> 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 like, so you, you, you started planning and then like, here is the virus and then like wow. what happened like how did you well, how did yeah how did you still <laughs> stay with the my, um I had so I have two kids they're five and four right now um and at the time they were oh gosh they were three and two and um I had just kind of come out of like the depths of motherhood where like I'm just needed all the time um and so like I had taken a pretty good break off a pole for three years, like doing any sort of uh, teaching or training. And um, we had moved up here to Ben from California in 2015. So um, I really wasn't doing a whole lot. And um, our kids had like started Montessori and like finally were like, you know, not needing me as much. And my husband approached me, he goes, why don't you open up the studio? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, open up the studio. Uh, You're crazy. no, now is the time. Do it. Open up the studio. This has been your dream for 10 years. We're here. Do it. And I was like, all right, bet. Let's do it. And um, that day, like I signed up for my LLC and was like, oh my God, what am I doing? (laughs) Like, I've never done this before. Like I, you know, um, and so it was a whole new experience and let alone like in the middle of COVID, um, you know, Oregon, you know, I'm not sure how your states were, but Oregon was just back and forth all over the place, changing rules and regulations all the time. So it was insane to kind of figure out, okay, what do we do? And how, how do we make sure that we're like safe while we open? Um, And so our build out took like four or five months, which from what I've heard is pretty fast. So thank God for my contractor at the time. I probably drove him crazy. Um, But right as we announced, so actually we announced two years ago next week um, is when we had our official announcement. And um, we got a lot of people excited and and we told them like, hey, we're doing a build out, but like you can sign up for membership now, you know, the whole thing. And um, we got a lot of interest about that because people were at home and they were like, I want to get out of the house. I want to get out of the house. Um, and our state had shut down gyms completely for, I think, four months. They had like reopened hair salons and, you know, cause those were essential and, <laughs> but they were like, gyms need to shut down cause those are unsafe. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to put my head down in the sand. I'm going to grind it out. I'm going to get this build out done. I don't know when they're going to open up gyms again but we're going to do it and we're going to get it done. Um, and just as luck would have it, they had reopened gyms about a week before we opened our doors. So it was like the most perfect timing. Um, and everybody, like we were all antsy just at home, like need to get out and like see people and all that. And I mean, we definitely deal dealt with a lot of changes and rules and regulations between like how many people could be in the space based on our square footage. Um, we're wearing masks. No, we're not wearing masks. We're wearing masks because we're vaccinated. We're not wearing, you know, just 
everything in between. And like our poles are pretty well spaced apart anyway. So we were lucky enough that they were like, you know, you need six feet distance for this and that and, you know, all that. So um, despite the um, COVID situation, it actually really has kind of helped us. I almost feel like it's um, helped us in such a weird way that it's like helped us build a community more. If that makes any sense. (laughs) Because I think we were all just like dying for a place to um, come out and express ourselves and move. And um, and with this place opening right after our gyms had opened right back up, it was just the perfect opportunity. So um, it worked really well in our favor. And um, despite all of the constant changes. (laughs) Right. Right. It sounds like it was almost like, like perfect timing. And it was like a beacon of light at the end of the tunnel. (laughs) They're like, please open your studio. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the nice thing too, is like, you know, like base, I mean, I go to the gym still too, but like, you know, with poles, it's like, we're wiping it down with alcohol. Everything's going to be sanitized. So like people were super on board with like, yeah, this is going to be clean and like, yeah, safe. Yeah. That's awesome. How many poles do you have? So we have eight poles in our main studio wow. and then we have, I'm actually in the private room right now, but, um, we have a private room with a flying pole and then, um, another pole. <sighs> yeah. That's, That's so incredible. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Tell us about the flying pole. Yes. So <laughs> I like, I mean, sometimes I selfishly buy stuff for the studio. Cause I'm like, <gasps> I really want to try it myself. <laughs> so that we put a little aerial point up in our private room and we have, um, a, like a nine foot flying pole and then a Lyra, some silks and some other things just for like, you know, uh, if people want to like run out the room and play with it, but, um, the flying it's, I'm a spin pole person. I love spin pole to begin with, but the flying pole is a whole <laughs> other monster. Um, cause it spins, but then you're, it spin it, you spin around it and then it spins. So like, you think you're totally fine on spin pole and you've like mastered being on spin pole. And then you get on this and you get so nauseous, but it's so fun. It's super fun. I'm dying to try it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I definitely need to try it in 2023. Yes. <laughs> that's oh incredible I love that you I love that you said sometimes you buy stuff just because you want to try it <laughs> but then the students true I feel the students truly benefit from it yeah. not only you but oh, the yeah. students definitely do oh yeah we've definitely had a couple of students play on the the flying pole and the, they're like I forgot everything I know this is so different <laughs> uh, wow that's so cool I can't even imagine one day. <laughs> the studio sounds really amazing and it's it's so large. Did you like have a, all of that planned, like ready to go? Like that was the whole thing. I mean, originally looking for our space in town, I mean, Bend, Oregon, I, it's like a hot place now, but when we first moved here, there was like nothing. And uh, when we were originally looking for spaces, I had looked at maybe like 10 or 12. This was the first one I looked at. Um, and at first I was like, eh. I'll find something better. Um, <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then uh, j- this was the place. And when we first got it, I mean, this, the, our studio space hadn't been rented out in like six years. So there was like nothing here. It had collected like a layer of dust and there was no flooring. It had a drop ceiling that was like eight feet. And so we completely removed the drop ceiling and, um, all the way up. So we have uh, 14 feet of height. So all of our poles are 14 feet tall which is yes. really fun. <laughs> so awesome. Um, and that was, that was one of the things that I was really looking for with um, having mm-hmm. a studio is I didn't want to just, you know, have short poles if I could get away with it. Yeah. So it was a really, really important part uh, for me to find a place that I could have at least, at least 12 feet, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. But I found out really quickly from um, the pole manufacturer that if you go above 14 feet, you have to like custom order them from, <laughs> across the world and I was like oh <laughs> yeah. okay, well, feet. right yeah. and the insurance is so hard to get to yeah oh my gosh <laughs> that was a why whole don't thing. we want wow. us to be up there I know. <laughs> like, half the insurance places I'm like well okay 12 feet what happens if like my hands above 12 feet is it covered or, like, <laughs> no. yeah. only everything underneath <laughs> exactly. oh my gosh Too yeah funny. but uh, 
Well, this space has been great. And um, I mean, I definitely wanted to find a space that could hold um, at least like eight poles. Um, yeah. so we got really lucky with that, um, spacing wise, you know, we, I think we have about seven and a half feet between each pole. So there's like ample space to. Perfect. Play. Yeah. And it's so cool. You have a space for aerials too. Thank you. Now, wow. now everyone wants to do that. I know. I mean, it's kind of like you get into like one aerial sport and it's a gateway drug to the next one. It is. Yes. It sure is. <laughs> I mean, pole will always be like my favorite. But like, I absolutely love just like trying to play around on, you know, a couple others. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> right. And then, so what, um, how would you describe your, your teaching style and your training style? So, um, how would I describe that? I'm going to give you a little bit of background because I feel like it needs a little bit of background. <laughs> um, so I mean, I, you know, going back to when I was like 18 to 20, I was really struggling with body image. I was struggling with weight. I was struggling with feeling confident and comfortable in myself and my own skin. Um, you know, I didn't really know how to dress myself or like even really take care of myself because I wasn't confident or happy with who I was or what I looked like. And, um, I had, um, suffered through, um, and trigger warning, sorry, but I had suffered through, um, an eating disorder. Um, and, um, uh, I've been every size in the book from zero to, well, not every, but you know, from zero to 16 and ev everything in between and, you know, been over 200 pounds. I've been like brittle and bone. And, um, it was quite a journey for me as a, fitness trainer, but also as a pole instructor to be every size, because I think when I looked my fittest or thinnest, everybody kept coming to me and they were looking at me for advice. And how, how did you do that? And how'd you get there? Thinking like, you know, I have the healthy key answer. And then when, you know, I was, um, postpartum and about 50 pounds heavier, um, and I was doing pole, like I had, you know, students question me and be like, well, how are you going to teach me? You know? Um, and so I really kind of encountered a lot from both ends of the spectrum of, um, you know, people not trusting my brain because maybe my body didn't look like the part. Um, and the unfortunate thing about recovering from an eating disorder sometimes is you go the exact opposite direction. Um, and so, I really take a lot of that to heart when it comes to how, um, I teach and my philosophy when I work with people, um, everybody, everybody literally is different. Everybody has a different story, different history. Every, everybody is going to do things differently. And so, um, while like a lot of the certifications out there, are like, here's your basic information, here's your cookie cutter run with it. Okay, good. You're certified. <laughs> um, I really wanted to find and discover different ways and different modalities of working with people so that they could be successful. So uh, especially when it comes to like when I teach class, um, you know, I'm not like this is the only way to do a butterfly and this is the only entrance. <laughs> That's it. No, you know, um, I really try to offer multiple different entries and solutions and really looking at like the minute picture of things, you know, if, um, some, I've really tried a lot. Um, some of my other background comes from, so like with all that continuing education stuff, right. Um, I really dived deep into corrective and functional exercise, um, which has been incredible to learn. Cause I feel like it's helped me become a better pole instructor, um, because it's aided me to be able to in the middle of class, Hey, your arm is just slightly off this way, or your pelvis is tucked or, you know, your ankle extension, you know, just the very small minor details that really can make or break moves for people. And, um, I've had a lot of students come in like, I can't do this move. I can't do it. I've tried it a thousand times. I'm like, okay, show me. Okay. Here's the reason why this small thing, this small thing, this small thing, it's not because you suck. It's not because you're not strong enough. It's not because you're not flexible enough. It's, these just minor details. And, um, and so I really try to bring that with anybody that I work with and, and show them like, yes, this is possible. 
Um, we just have to work together to figure out how you need to move. Um, you know, and I have some students who are like, I can't, I'm never going to be able to do ballerina. I'm like personal mission. I'm going to get, we're going to do it. You know, we're going to get you there. Um, here's your training program. Here's your flexibility program. Here's your, like, let's get it done. Don't say never, we're going to do it. So, um, because I, you know, as just a pole dancer myself, I would often kind of have negative self-talk. Oh, I'll never be able to get this move or, oh, I'll never, you know, be flexible enough or strong enough or this or that, or enough, enough, enough. And I, you know, kind of sat down with myself a couple of years ago and was like, F it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to figure out how I can do it. Um, and so I, that's what I really like to bring to the table when I work with anybody is that what well, we work with your ego and we tell it to calm down <laughs> and we create that safe space for you to experiment, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, and eventually get what you want to get. Uh, <laughs> love that so much <laughs> thank you no it's um did were there any are there any certifications for corrective and functional exercises oh, yeah. yes so um national academy of sports medicine the nasm um is what i have my personal training through and they have um, a corrective exercise specialist program and then ace so um, i think it's american something of exercise I can't remember off the top of my head, they have their uh, functional movement specialist certification. So, you know, with the personal training certification, you have to get like recertified every two years. Yep. And so you yes. have to like collect CECs. And so um, it's been really nice to kind of hone in on that and really pick like a strong specialization and, and stick with it. Mm -hmm. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, that and is. that's a good way to be forced to continue your education. <laughs> yes, which we all should do. <laughs> Used to be a chore, but now I'm like, okay, I get it. Okay, I yeah, get it. right. Like I understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um, with all this education, do you offer any other coaching programs and services um, online or from your studio? I do. So um, I have a couple eBooks actually that um, yeah. I've published and I have available on my Instagram. Um, everything from working on building up uh, strength for shoulder mounts to like mobility programs to um, like eight weeks. Uh, I have an eight week inverter series um, that I love doing both. Um, in person and online. Um, I also have an ebook for that as well. Um, but I do do online like personal training programs, um, that I offer that are like on a month to month basis. And then, um, I do a lot of stuff in studio as well. So like classes and, um, we have a whole competition team here as well that currently we're training for, um, the next PSO competition. Yes, I love that. And we will have that link in the comments for everyone. <laughs> the links to all of that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to have to check those ebooks out. I love that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so you do competitions. Have you personally done any competitions? Yeah. Um, I've done a few with PSO. Um, I, I really loved doing the virtual ones actually over COVID. Um, I mean, I do love doing live, but like, I don't know, for some reason doing the virtual during COVID, I was like, I get to have more control over <laughs> my piece and I can record it a thousand times. Um, but yeah, I have competed in um, dramatic and championship with PSO um, level four and level five. And um, I'm hanging up my competition hat right now to focus a little bit more on um, getting the rest of my team up and at them. Um, I really enjoy coaching, I think more than I do competing. Um, <laughs> just cause I love seeing other people win. It's, it's way more fulfilling for some reason. I don't know, but, um, I, I do love performing, performing. I feel like I will do that anytime. Do you get a lot of performance opportunities out there? So bend is still kind of up and growing a little bit. Um, we just had last week, um, we did our annual Halloween, um, event which like what Pulse Studio doesn't do a, a Halloween event. I feel like that's just straight across the board. We all do it. <laughs> um, and so I we did it. a bunch of student performances, instructor performances, group performances. Um, I performed there as well. And then um, our studio actually does have a um, 
performance collaborative. So we do offer like performances um, around town with events. And um, that's been really fun to kind of start and do around town. So that's been new this year. That's so awesome. awesome. We, we're starting our, our performance troupe too. And um, so how do you go about finding opportunities for your performance? Do you have a stage poll? How do, how do you make it work? So we have, <laughs> we have um, two stage poles and then we have um, a, like a, a large A-frame um, that we could do like other apparatuses with because we're, um, we try to really connect ourselves with the circus community here. So it's not just pole. Um, so our collaborative offers everything from like Lyra to silks, hammock, trapeze, pole, the lollipop, um, basically anything. And so we've just kind of come together to create like our little smorgasbord of um, performances or um, whether we're like doing a solo performance or like background music. And we recently um, in town did a performance along with this band that was visiting from Jamaica um, at this place called Chiba Hut. And it's, I mean, it was, um, oh, it was fun. It was super fun, but we just had our like poles <laughs> up there fun. dancing with the band for three hours. And it was, it was a total That's blast. Awesome. I love it. Right. We need more performance opportunities for us. <laughs> That's yeah. what all the students are always asking. <laughs> where, when and where can I perform? That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like how you, um, networked with the circus community that's awesome to it allows you and this performers to try everything and really kind of branch out that was that's really clever <laughs> I mean, her, my philosophy has always been like to build a bigger table i'm not trying to have a small table i want to support other businesses in town i want to be collaborative with them um you know we're not against each other we're here to all help each other nice. so that's been an incredible opportunity to really just kind of connect with the other places in town and, and really make us a cohesive unit. And we can just say, you know, go, come here for pole class and then go over here on Wednesday for aerial silks. It's, um, okay. it's been awesome. Yes. So right. <laughs> and that gives um, like audiences a more well-rounded view of aerials too, mm -hmm. because, you know, it'll inspire a lot more different movements for sure. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. It's been helpful too. Cause I, I, I mean, I, I, it's so funny still saying this like almost 15 years later, but I still feel like the general community doesn't understand poll. So it's really nice to be able to show it to the public and, and have them understand. Yes. I mean, it is multifaceted poll can be so many things, yeah. but um, it's, it's been a great way to kind of open it more up to the community. Yes. yes love it yeah hopefully we'll be able to do more performances too <laughs> <laughs> i know spread the awareness around the united states yeah Ooh. i feel other parts of the world are pretty good with it oh yeah right yeah yeah I mean, we do like a lot of events around town too we were at our local like pride um events and um yes. it's funny usually when we do any sort of like out we did one in town where it's uh, it's called munch and music where it's just a bunch of <laughs> local bands playing and they have like a bunch of vendors and stuff and more often than not we get kids running up to our stage pole and they're like Wee! and they're so yes. they just have like, the best time with it and i'm like go for it awesome <laughs> Kids That's like awesome. really love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, our insurance currently doesn't cover anyone under the age of eighteen, so okay. I know. But hopefully, know. sometime soon, we'll have enough interest and we'll find an insurance to cover. Because <laughs> uh, when my stepkids are on my home pool, I'm like, "Yay, have fun, but with caution." Because <laughs> yeah, <with caution. laughs> they'll go. So like they have no I fear. Yeah, they're so Fast. strong. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, and they don't care. Like they're like, I'm gonna go upside down, and I'm like, oh yeah, right? like immediately. <laughs> my daughter's favorite pole is the flying pole, and she's great at it. And she will just hang on and spin for like. A I, love, I, love but I don't know how you're doing that, girl. <laughs> I, I love, love that. So That's much. incredible. And you said they're like five and four. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they'll do spin pull only. They're like, mom, put it on spin pull. This is, I don't want static. Let's yeah, go. No, <laughs> oh, so brave at that age. It's oh, be a man. fun ride. Oh, oh that's yeah. such a nice, a nice reminder for how we should all be up for the pole, though. Like, 
stay in that like kid space. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, what is your favorite yeah. pull trick? I'm asking your question, Chris. <laughs> I was just about to ask that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, favorite pull trick. This was hard. Because, um, oh. I, I don't know, I have like five. <laughs> but if I had to pick, I'm going to pick two. Um, Capizio and Spatchcock, I think, are my favorite. <laughs> Okay, so I know what Spashcock is. What's the Capizio? Sorry to interrupt. So it's like ballerina on steroids, where like your arm goes all the way back and you grab your like back ankle and then oh, you're gonna like kick okay. out front. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. Wow. And only reason is because like I put freaking Spatchcock on a pedestal for years. I was like, I'm gonna be a good polar when I get Spatchcock. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, I'm a crappy polar. Um, and so I got it, I, um, in 2020 and I still have the video of me getting it. And I, it's just so funny because like, I'm like struggling to get in it and I get in it. My face just goes, <gasps> and I like pause and I'm at home and like, it's on spin pull, but it's like, stop spinning. And I have like the video and like, it's it's video and I'm just screaming for my husband. I'm like, get over here, spin me. <laughs> and he just comes and he just pushes my butt. Um, I'm whipping around spatchcock. I'm like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> I love it. And so, You're like, I am a pole dancer. Yes, officially, give me the name tag. I'm a pole dancer now. Like 13 years later. <laughs> and so that's been my favorite to whip out because I know, like, I mean, I'm no Felix Kane with the spatchcock, but I'm like, <laughs> I can get into it. So like, you know, it's like one of those, like you put it up on a pedestal for so long and you're like, I can get into it and it feels good. So that and uh, Capizio, absolute favorite for sure. Oh my gosh, I tried this fast track the other day just to try it. I still cannot get into it, but I was so far away. I was like, no. <laughs> um, when I was first learning it, my, my um, who I was working with at the time, she literally just took my ankle and she went, Boop! And like, put it on the pole, like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what oh, I'm... <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, okay, I guess I can get there. Anyway, now I can put my own foot on, but. <laughs> That's incredible. I think I've accepted that I'm not going to do it. And I don't have any intentions of wanting it. There's other tricks I'd rather do. Dude, I feel <laughs> the same way about some of those tricks. I'm like, that's great for you that you got that, but I'm going to hard pass <laughs> <laughs> what what are some of those tricks <laughs> oh, um god well i mean i've done phoenix but i hate it wow I hate it wow hate it. love it That's wow like one of my dream tricks <laughs> same I, like anytime i get asked by a student like can you teach it i'm like <laughs> like i don't know it just always feels so heavy in it like it doesn't like there's just some moves you just like it doesn't feel good on your body and it's different for everybody, but like that Facts. definitely Phoenix and then um, broken split. I hate that one. Yeah, it's been a nemesis of mine for a long time. Hate it. Yeah. I feel like I know what it is, but I'm not thinking of it. It comes from the um, like an upside down birds of paradise. Okay. And then your elbow hooks on the pole and you kind of like drop into this like weird oh my goodness you foot above your head and your elbows on the pole and it's just doesn't no oh my goodness wow <laughs> i'm too, way too um scaredy cat to do it <laughs> like yeah that sounds like super like painful flexy too yeah mm, yeah uh, like tick tocky kind of motion yeah <laughs> oh god like, no like, coming out of that birds of paradise and you get that like Ooh, and you're like oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh my gosh right like for me nothing comes after bird of paradise like that's the end that's the end yeah <laughs> really <laughs> like i did it okay <laughs> too funny like, lights off and i mm -hmm. get myself out of this <laughs> oh, yeah. i inadvertently do that with my satellite every single time i'm just like all right <laughs> it's down oh my gosh i think that's one that i don't think i'll ever do <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. There's so many things that scare me. I don't like the things that happen behind my back. I'm like, what's oh, going yeah. on back there? Yeah. You're like, this is, this, I can't get out of this. No. <laughs> See, I love this. The scary you stuff. Do. Oh my God. Like, I can't wait till I could do a phone G, maybe a phone G360. I love all that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I tried a phone G once. One oh. time. Because oh uh, I hate it. And I was like, I looked at the trick and I was like, I'll never do that. And I'm cool with it. Yeah. And then I went, I had to go in for surgery last December and I had, I was going to be out for six weeks. So I was like, all right, F it. I'm going to do this move that I hate. I'm gonna try it once, say that I did it and then never do it again. And I did it. And I was like, this is disgusting. I hate it. No. And then I'm never going to do it. You're like, I'm already going in for surgery. So if I get hurt, I'll, be- I'll already be there. So it's fine. Yeah. But it didn't feel funny. good. No. Oh, God. No. Like the uh, any of those like full release move. Like, oh, my yes. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know some people who are super into them, but I don't know. Right. Yeah, like, I don't- like, Just go for it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the flexi tricks, but I like those full release moves. Oh. Um <laughs> It's weird. We're, we're all different. Yeah, we're all yeah. different. It's so incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, what kind of um, hand and body grip do you use on the pole? Yes. Um, I will smother myself in dry hands until I die. Absolutely. That. And then I was just recently brought on to um, tough skin. If you've ever heard it, but aerialists use it like on silks. I've never heard of that tough skin. Yeah, it's basically like a bandage adhesive. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, is it the spray? Yeah, it's a spray. Oh, I have seen that it. little yeah. white can of spray. Yeah, yeah I can't use that one. <laughs> I've been told don't use it on your hands, but use it in like your elbows and behind your knees and stuff, and you will stick. Yeah, to the pole, literally. Is it like is it like the Kramer spray? Yes, it's the Kramer spray. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I, I've tried that one, not the tough skin, but that Kramer spray was no joke. Oh, it's yeah, no joke. right. It's too strong for my skin. It just rips it right off. Oh yeah. I've definitely <laughs> yes. pulled skin and blood with that, but yeah, it, was, like, right. it was necessary for what I was, I was like, I need this or I'm going to fall off the pole. <laughs> um, but love dry hands. We live in a very um, dry climate up here. So we're like high desert. And so literally it can uh. be like, 35 degrees in the morning and 80 degrees in the afternoon. Like it's insane. Um, and wow. it's super dry. So it's like a dry heat, not a wet heat at all. So we're all just, when I first moved here, my hair was like out to here because it was so dry. Um, and so we have to be like extra careful with the dry hands because you can get too dry. And I've been like anti lotion for like so long now. I'm like, mm-hmm. I won't wear lotion. I'm a pole dance, you know, the whole thing. Um, <laughs> don't wear it within 24 hours of class. And my instructor um, told me about, um, I think it's called pole physics. Pole physics. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, theory, really? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a lotion for pole. Mm. Um, she's like, no, you got to try it. Cause like literally our skin is so dry here. Like, you know, when you like take off your leggings for the day, it's like, it's just pff, skin. Oh <laughs> really cute. Um, funny. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. I'll try it. But like, I, you know, I don't want to be slippery on the pole. And I started using it like three or four months ago. Oh my God. Like I've never loved a lotion as much as I love this. And like, it's now part of my daily routine. Like after a shower, I'm putting that on. I'm like, I can feel like my, my skin feels grippier. It's crazy to me that I'm like a lotion, but (laughs) Yeah. Cause I mean, if your skin's too dry, right. Then you're too slippery. So it's been like a interesting balance to find like what works. Right. Like, cause like maybe the first year of polling, you can get away with not moisturizing, but that's second year. Yeah. You're going to be so dry. <laughs> but yeah, the, the pole physics, I really like it too. And I only need to use it in the winter. Um, yeah. But yeah, it does. It did really help my skin stay moisturized and not make me slip down the pole. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not sponsored by them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, do you have any advice for beginner pollers? Ooh, yeah, absolutely. Um, go slow. Go slow. Enjoy being a beginner. 
don't put moves on a pedestal and be kind to yourself. I think, you know, I did the same thing. I'm totally guilty of it. Like you come in and you're like, Ooh, piece of candy, Ooh, piece of candy. Like with every trick it's, I got, Ooh, I got my Jasmine. I did it once. Okay. I don't even need to do my other side. What's the next trick. What's the next trick. What's the, you, know, you just like chill. Like it's okay to be a beginner. I have a lot of like begin like they come to their first class and they're like, okay, so when can I move up to the next level? Like, I don't know whenever you want to, like there, you could go next week. If you meet the prerequisites, you go two years from now, like you go at your own pace and like your pace is going to be different from somebody else's. And so like, you really want to pay attention to that. It's your journey. It's nobody else's. You don't have to do every move in the book. You don't have to do a spatchcock to be a good puller. (laughs) You don't have to do anything to feel like you're doing something. You could literally never invert and you're an amazing puller. Like it's so yeah, don't put moves on a pedestal and just be just be kind to yourself because this is this is the kind of space that allows you to find that kindness to yourself. So allow it. Yes. Thank that. you so much for that. I know. Right. It's, so it's, a constant remind, <laughs> it's a constant reminder that we just need to definitely keep telling ourselves for sure. And we don't. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even still to this day, like I tell myself, like you can calm down and you know, you don't That's... need to do like, I save so many things on my Instagram. Like I got to try that. And I got to yes. try that. Uh, I'm like, it's okay if we don't. And we just work on leg hangs today, Emily, like we can just, yes. yeah. Cause everything can always be better. Right. So yes. yeah, it's okay to go back to the basics. It's okay to do basics. Always. For sure. Yes. I always laugh and say, I didn't know anything about patience until I started <laughs> learning pole oh, yeah. dance. Cause like yes. my process is so slow, but that's okay. <laughs> like, yes. It took me like two years to invert for the first time, like Damn. properly. And that, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely tried inverting at like three months into my pole journey and I will never let that video see the light of day. Too funny. (laughs) But. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like Instagram and even sometimes pole competitions are at fault. Like we want to, we want to get that amazing picture. We want to do the coolest tricks in our performance and we really set ourselves up for failure. Oh, totally. Yeah. Right. It's just like, uh, it's, uh, you want to do all the cool things in your piece and all Act. the time, like post the cool Instagram video, which part of me is kind of grateful in my early days of poll. Like that was not a thing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah, um, for sure, right? I mean, I recently posted on my Instagram, my students had asked me at the beginning of the year, they're like, well, do you ever fall out of a move? Like, do you ever like biff it? And I'm like, yeah. Yes. They're like, well, everything you post on Instagram, you're doing it perfectly. Like what? And I'm like, all right, deal. I'm going to, every time, like I film myself and I fall out of a move, I'm saving that little clip. And at the end of the year, I'm going to put together a nice little compilation of just me eating it. And, <laughs> and I just posted it actually. So um, if you want to go watch me, just eat complete crap. Yeah. <laughs> Or it's there because I feel like we all need to see like our instructors struggle Facts. a little bit because we do. Yes, Pe- right. People Chris, love it; they that. really do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just they love it, but they need to see it because yeah. we do only post like how yeah. awesome we are, and then they're yeah. like, "Why can't I be that awesome?" But like, I'm not that awesome. Like, yeah, I'm just yeah. not showing Facts. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love I love it. We should definitely all post more fails and our struggles and how hard it was (laughs) to make it real. Yeah, always hard. (laughs) It is. is. Right. But it's so rewarding. Yeah, That's what makes it rewarding for sure. Yeah. Where do do you see yourself in the future? Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, I don't know what I'm doing next week. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I hope that, you know, I can continue to pull as long as possible. Like, um, you know, I think one of my goals, you know, seeing 
some of my older family members was like, I want to make sure that I stay healthy and remain active and take care of my body. And, you know, that includes things like mobility and working on like functional movement and, you know, not doing things on the pole that I would do in my twenties that, mm, you know, were a little extra dangerous. Um, but, you know, I hope to continue down this pole journey. I don't know where it will take me and, um, you know, hope to still be doing the studio thing and, um, yeah, being a part of that, but that's about all I can hope for. I think at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. Keep going with the pole flow. (laughs) (laughs) And keep hoping because that's all we can do. Yes. Do you is have there any, anything um, else? Oops, sorry, we keep no, you interrupting can ask. each other. <laughs> is there anything else you would like to share with um, everyone? Anything you want to promote or any more advice or tidbits? Oh, gosh. Well, thank you for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And it's been really awesome to talk to you both. And thank you for giving me a platform to share some information. And um, But if you know, if you want to follow myself, um, on Instagram, usually, um, I post a lot of like little mini tutorials there, um, everything from, uh, mobility, flexibility to, um, spin pull combos or, or static combos. Um, and so if you're looking for inspiration, um, that's one of my favorite things to do is just post these little, um, inspirational combos and stuff. But, um, yeah, other than that, I think that's, yeah, it. Yes, thank you so much. We'll have the links um, to all that below um, to Instagram. Do you have a TikTok too? I sure do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll okay, have the links so to my all of that. Instagram is my professional. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> On the other hand, um, <laughs> is where my um, little troll self comes out. And yeah. has all things. Troll, I call it uh, a pole troll. So <laughs> I just love making fun of everything we possibly can make fun of in pole. So if you want like a good little laugh, um, yeah, that's my TikTok is the place for that one. This is awesome. awesome. <laughs> Can't wait to check it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Emily, thank you so much for, for being willing to share your story and for educating yes. us and continuing to be awesome and and making performance opportunities for polars. So many incredible things, nice. Emily. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you both. I, this is awesome. <laughs> it was. Thank you so much um, for being here. And especially with your work in teaching with trauma, trauma as like a main focus. It's so important, especially in what we do. It's, um, yeah, truly thank you. Because I can't imagine how many people appreciate that. And I'm excited to go through that because we don't think about it. We really don't. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad that we're, that message is spreading and, you know, we're, we're making space for it. So um, it's awesome. Yes. Facts. On that note, we can get ready to sign out. All right. (laughs) Thank you so much for (laughs) watching and listening to our episode of Pole on the Call with the amazing Emily Igan. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and we are signing off. We're signing off. Ooh. That was my thanks. highest one. <laughs> yes. Ooh, those are cute. Oh, I love those. Are those, those are nine? Wrong. Nine. Oh, wow. Are you damn those. those? I do, even though they came with the tag that said, these are not <laughs> for standing in. These are purely for just entertainment purposes. Like, <laughs> 